Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about socialism and democracy. There's a lot of people who believe that socialism and democracy cannot be put together. Yet in fact, the very essence of socialism is for the people, which means therefore very democratic. Okay? I'm going to do two videos on this. The first video is going to show how socialism and democracy work very well together. The second will show how socialism is not a dictatorship. Socialism never has been a dictatorship, never will be a dictatorship. Okay? All right. Now, you might hear my cat in the background. I've got two cats, Persephone and Demeter. They come in and out. I love them. They'll, they'll just come in and out. Okay. Socialism and democracy. Here's an example. Oh, let's first go for state-owned. All right? A lot of people believe that state-owned anything cannot be democratic, which is silly because state-owned only means owned by the state. It has nothing to do with how it's operated. Consider a, a park bench. All right? It's owned by the city, not by any individual. Yet, where we put that park bench, that can be put to a vote. Every person in the city is allowed to vote on where to put the park bench. So, it's state-owned, city-owned in this case, but democratic because the people get to vote. Now, of course, in more practical terms, uh, a choice like that would be probably be narrowed down to like three choices. So like state-owned in general, so city-owned in general, parks department owned more specifically, they decide and give you three choices, and then the entire citizenry get to vote from those three choices where to put the park bench. Okay? That is socialism and democracy. That is state-owned and democracy. And in the true sense of socialism, the true modern socialism, everything is democratic as much as practically possible. Okay? Now, it's always a decision. I mean, there are a million things that can be owned in this world. So the people have to decide, do I own them myself? Does my city own them? Does my state own them? Does my country own them? What am I willing to, you know, give to that level? And who should vote? How much should they vote? All those things can be decided. But get the basic concept that anything that we decide to give control of, ownership of to the government, or control of to the government can also be run very democratically. Okay? Okay, the state owns the roads. Let the people vote on how those roads should be operated. The state owns the schools. Let the people vote on how those schools should be operated. Okay? So state ownership can still be very democratic. Now again, there are different practical levels for this. Should every decision on road maintenance be put to a vote to every single citizen? Maybe not. Maybe it's better to have, you know, a separate council for that. But again, the council should be democratically elected, and, and so on and so forth. So there's, all, there's a million variations of all this. The main point is that state-owned can also be democratic. State-owned can also be democratic in the most ideal sense. Ideal sense, as much as possible, is owned by the individuals, by their families, owned by the communities, by their the, the people in the group. All right? As much as possible to leave it as local as possible. And also, ideally, whatever's owned by any any level whether it's a club, 
or a business or you know city park bench or whatever else as much as possible the people of the group get to vote on the major decisions and policies on that topic okay so state owned government owned group owned does not mean dictatorship it can and should be very democratic right and by the same vein here the uh, socialism true socialism modern socialism or everything benefits the people should as much as possible be voted on by the people the people should be able to get to decide everything that affects their lives direct democracy as much as possible in socialism but for practical purposes you know we're gonna have to do a little bit more state run and a little less voting just only for practical purposes but those are the, those are the main concepts okay that's enough for now